You are in the right place if you think you're here to see the presentation Teaming Together in a Crisis, Supporting Emergency Remote Teaching, or ERT, at UCT, that's the University of Cape Town. Both of our presenters this morning are from the University of Cape Town. We have a Sam Lee Pan, who is the Learning Technologies Operations Manager at um, at UCT's Center for Innovation in Teaching and Learning. She's on the Learning Technologies team, which maintains and supports their learning management system, uh, which uh, is Sakai, named Viola. Um, she supports the lecture recording system, open cast based and various other educational technologies. Meanwhile, her colleague, uh, Luba Balo Badi, is the Senior Learning Technologies consult Consultant, uh, also used, um, also uh, supporting a range of learning technologies used at UCT, and that does include their Sakai named Viola, Turnitin, Lecture Recording, Video Conferencing, Zoom Adobe Co Connect, and so forth. You can enter questions in the chat box at any time on, and we'll either address them during the session or we'll answer them at the end. Presenters, it's your choice. The session is be re being recorded and will be available at a later date on the Sakai YouTube channel. And with that, I turn it over to our presenters. Great. Um, I think I'm on mute. Am I? Oh, no, I'm not on mute. <laughs> you can hear me. Um, hi, everyone. Welcome. Um, we'll probably do questions um, as we can, but if we don't get your question, if you can just raise it again at the end. Um, and we'll just switch over because we are co-presenting. So if there's a question raised, we'll try and raise it with that person. Um, so Loba Bala, you can just let me know if any, if any questions arise, and I will similarly do that for you. Um, so thank you for joining us today. Um, we are talking about our campus experience with emergency remote teaching. I'm sure everyone has lots to say on this. Um, so we'll do our best to um, summarize our experience and what we've learned from it. Um, so as we mentioned, um, my lovely colleague Loba Balo is here in the room um, and he's been sent and foremost in a lot of our help desk support. Um, I've been involved on some of the technical implementations. We're both on the same team. Um, and yeah, it's it's basically trying to coordinate things, get um, people working across the department to, it's, it's been a really interesting experience. Um, so just to reference right in the beginning, our acting director, Sakena Walji, has done a, a previous presentation in June. Um, during the uh, what we learned in COVID. So some of these, this information does refer to, to this presentation, um, but we have added a lot extra too since there's been a development since then. Um, and this is a moment where we reflect. Three years ago, um, my colleagues, um, Shanali, uh, Nicola Pallet, and um, myself were actually presenting at Sakai Virtual Conference in November, 2017, on how we had our own uh, student protest led uh, shutdown um, and what we learned from that. So um, we got some links and stuff. I'll pop the slides in uh, the forum. So if you wanna see anything with regards to our previous presentation, that's all there. Um, so a bit of deja vu. Um, Luba, um, I just wanna see. Okay, yes, this is for you to chat through. Yeah. Thank you, Sam. Uh, yeah, so we're basically going down memory lane here. So I think the last time we had to, um, you know, hit the ground running and uh, try and support student learning and teaching uh, was back uh, during the FISMAS fall time. And that was uh, back in 2015, between 2015 and 2017. And um, Mainly then, uh, most institutions around South Africa were shut down. I think about 23 of them were all shut down. And because uh, due to a lot of reason, of course, and um, I think the main one was, you know, the exorbitant fee uh, hikes 
that the institutions um, uh, introduced at the end of 2015. And uh, students felt that this was one way of excluding the, the, um, the have-nots or the students that are coming from uh, poor backgrounds. Uh, so you would find that um, students that were academically eligible to, to, you know, to join university uh, couldn't join because they didn't have uh, money to pay for the fees. And some institutions, even though we have a, uh, a national um, funding scheme uh, for students that don't have enough money to join university, some institutions are quite expensive that you still had to pay out from your own pocket as a student. Uh, so the fees must fall came up and um, it was mainly, I think the gist of it was mainly around uh, access to quality education and mainly, mainly fighting against um, the exclusion of students on financial grounds. So students that were eligible to and met the criteria to study at a university but couldn't make it in because uh, of their financial uh, background. So I think back then, we, we then had to find ways uh, to support learning because we, I remember maybe after two months later, we had to resume uh, with the teaching and learning uh, activities at our institutions. And we had to find a different way to support students, you know, and, um, and uh, taking the journey of online uh, teaching and learning, it was a bit hard for the students. And there were further protests, of course, and pushbacks from students because they, you know, uh, due to a lot of other reasons, i.e. access to, to, to devices, uh, you know, access, access to, to the data to connect to, you know, to online learning platforms like Vula uh, and other, uh, other technologies that we use at the institution. So it, yeah, it was back then was a quite intense time. But uh, I think we've come a long way now. So this was the first time we had to think on our feet and hit the ground running and uh, support teaching and learning. And I think then we were more like um, we were walking in the dark. So you know we we're hitting potholes. But I think we learned a lot from from that experience of Fismas Fall. Um, yeah, you can move on to this next slide, uh, Sam. Um, great. Uh, so yeah, we. Thanks for that summary, uh, Laba. So we learned to kind of live with uncertainty and plan when you can. Ironically, 2020 seemed more organized than back then. Um, there was a lot of difficulty. We didn't know day to day if we would be open. Um, so it was very different. Even sometimes things would change by the hour. Um, so like living with uncertainty, it was hard. Um, and teaching online, as we know itself, is even difficult to transition. So a lot of empathy with both staff and students, managing stress, a lot of unhappiness. People didn't even want to go online back then. Um, this year, we've also experienced a lot of exhaustion. Um, this year, it's been a lot longer, um, you know, that we've been doing online teaching now. Um, but lots of support and care provided. Um, I think that sometimes support did get a bit intense because, um, yeah, people are just fatigued, really. Um, so obviously with this is <laughs> when they first decided they were going to go online, they just announced like it's going to next week, it's going to be online. And in their mind, it was just like, okay, everyone, we're just going to switch on Zoom or Adobe Connect. And um, we know it's not that simple, um, especially in the South African context, we need to plan more asynchronous and more flexible um, ways of people learning. Um, there's a lot of people that don't, and Lobobala will discuss um, more of that just now. Terminology is really important. We, uh, for lack of um, better timing and stuff, we use the term blended learning, and it actually got a very bad rap because different people adopted it different ways, and some people didn't adopt it at all. So it had a really negative experience to a certain extent, um, though we did try hard. Um, so 2020, we ERT, we emergency remote teaching, and that might change to physically distance learning next, uh, next year. Uh, where campus is partially open. Um, so our new academic year starts um, in March next year. So we'll be wrapping up exams in December. Um, and then, yeah, just digital inequality was huge. Um, so we've done a lot more on the low tech design. 
um, though we did advocate for multiple flexible approaches um, from the beginning of um, online learning like promotion. Um, yeah, but we have some resources on that. And this work, remote working is difficult. Um, it's not normal for a lot of people. We struggled um, three years ago or well, before that, five years ago. Um, 2020, has we've been using a lot of Microsoft Teams and such. It's actually grown a little bit of a community. Um, so it's actually been a lot better in, in trying to facilitate some of that. Um, so more experiences is summarized in, uh, this is a, a March paper or March article by Phil um, Hill, uh, which some of you would know, and our, uh, act, our director at that stage um, summarized some of our experiences from our previous sh shutdowns. I'm handing over to Luba for the digital access. Yeah, uh, thank you for that, Sam. Um, right, um, yeah, digital access. I think this is the, the pending issue, especially in our context, um, you know, um, uh, over the, the last few years, you know, digital divide has been the, the core um, um, impediment, if you, for lack of a better word, you know, for most of us to move online. And um, as you can see on this slide, um, I've shared a couple of screen uh, screenshots. If you take a look on the bottom left hand side, you'll notice that uh, if we were if we were to compare South Africa to the rest of uh, other our African countries or the rest of the world, you'll find that we're actually coming up when it comes to the pricing of data, um, which then somehow you know becomes an issue um, for most of us to move online because you know the expensive data and um, I know previously. They, you know, you could use data for a shortfall, I mean, for a short period of time, and it would expire, you know, so I think we've improved coming from maybe three years ago, um, uh, when we had uh, the lockdowns and the, uh, the fees must fall protests, where, you know, some, so, some uh, service providers like your cell phone uh, service providers actually offered, you know, free data to students during that time. Of course, it was for a short period uh, and it didn't go on for a long time. And um, I think with the COVID um, period or this COVID period or during our ERT, um, the institution and, and uh, you know, they did a great job in negotiating with the different service providers um, to, to slash or to zero rate certain um, learning platforms. Um, and um, we've even put together a, a portal for our students to see which, 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 which uh, resources or online resources are zero rated. So one of, one of those would be our learning management system, which is mostly used to, you know, to assess our students, to share content and, and also to communicate with students. So that's our primary um, you know, um, piece of technology that we use. Uh, but it also helped a lot with students because we also relied a lot on the use of videos, either uh, the use of uh, videos from previous, previous years courses. So most of the platforms were zero rated across the different uh, major networks in South Africa, which somehow, you know, benefited the students. So they could still, you know, access, uh, uh, in, in, you know, content during this time and you know, partake and, and, and complete um, uh, their tasks online. Of course, not all of them were, you know, benefited from this. There were still challenges, and I think there still are challenges. Um, but I think it's, it's much better than we were, or it's much better than it was um, five to five years ago, you know. Um, and of course, this has led to a number of other protests where I've actually people have actually fought against the high prices uh, of data. And we've seen our network providers also moving the direction of somehow trying to reduce the, the prices and you know, coming up with different uh, packages for students and so on. And for us now currently working from home, you know, yeah. So it's been, it, it remains a challenge in our South African context. I would, I would want to say the entire developing world, it still rem it remains a challenge, the digital divide. Yeah. Uh, if um, you can... 
Look, sure, there's, sorry. sorry, there's a question. Um, so oh. did the telecoms offer free data again in 2020? Um, so the free data, it was more that they zero rated the site, so they didn't charge for it. But yes, we managed to lobby again um, to get them to zero rates everything um, for our needs. So yeah, yeah. yeah. thanks, thanks Laura yeah. for that question. And, and and maybe I'll we'll answer it further on, on, on our upco upcoming slides, you know, uh, as to what interventions did our institution specifically UCT uh, come up with to to try and support the, you know, the teaching and learning remotely. Um, so as I mentioned, that we the biggest challenge is, is the digital divide, uh, divide um, and also the price of costs, uh, data costs. Um, what the institution did. It, it, it ran a somewhat of a survey, which Sam will cover uh, later on, ran somewhat of a survey to just ascertain on, or to, to just have a bigger picture as to how much of our students or how many of our students have access to devices and whether it's their primary device or whether they're sharing the device with someone else and so on. And those that didn't have devices, then the student had somewhat of a loan scheme where they then provided students with devices, i.e. laptops, uh, uh, because remember with the, with the shutdown and the lockdown in this case, the COVID lockdown, everyone was sent back home. And so the students were then, you know, sent laptops from at their different addresses around the country. And um, with those, they were also the institution after negotiating with the network service providers, uh, it also uh, had a, I would call it a data scheme, a monthly data scheme where students would then were then given, i.e., between thirty to forty megabyte, uh, sorry, gigs of data per month, so that they could, you know, uh, continue ac uh, accessing uh, online resources and participating in the in the synchronous uh, uh, sessions via, i.e., Zoom or MS Teams and so on. Um, of course, the connection speed remains, you know, another pending issue. You know, even myself working from home, I had issues with this. Uh, I still do, uh, and I think it's not just myself, but it's. I think it's a, it's a South African issue uh, when it comes to connectivity speed. You know, um, um, but we 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 you know, um, we try and you know, uh, continue and work, uh, but the connectivity speed is also another issue. Uh, but I have heard that the country is also trying to move towards a certain direction that will enable everyone to have uh, much better speeds. Uh, some parts of the country are still piloting, you know, the 5G networks and so on, the hope that um, co the connectivity speed will improve over time. Yeah. Um, uh, would you like uh, to move to the next slide, Sam? Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so this slide just basically summarizes what I was just talking about in the previous slide. So, you know, uh, students were given these laptops uh, on loan uh, to use so that they can also be part of this online learning experience um, and the free data, uh, monthly data for across the different networks that they are, they, the students might be in. And I, I'm, I, I'm st I still think even now they're still getting free data every month. Uh, but it depends if they exhaust that data, then it becomes an issue. You know, they would have to, to pay for data from their pockets. Uh, yeah. And Vula remains zero rated across uh, uh, most of the cell phone networks, uh, MTN, Vodacom and Solsi and Telcom. Um, yeah. And other services like our uh, Opencast, um, um, which is lecture recording or lecture capture service. For students to watch recordings that have been shared by uh, by their lecturers, yeah. So um, we have a page where all the detailed platform, a detailed list of all the platforms that are zero rated um, is, is is listed. Yeah, I mean, um, right. So this just uh, refers to that part. So I think this was the uh, the institution was very proactive in this case. You know. Uh, I think they foresaw this was going to be an issue and uh, they then went this route of whereby they would provide uh, students with between 30 to 40 megs, uh, uh, sorry, gigs of data. And, um, right, and uh, you know, so 
the way that the, these were done was like 15 gigs a day or 20 gigs a day and 20 gigs per night surfing and so on, you know. And um, yeah, I think this has worked quite well for the students. Um, but these were- Yeah, so, so sorry. So they purchased it. Um, so the network providers did still, still charge for it, but um, yeah. our institution made the decision to, to invest that so that, that we could reduce that inequality. Sorry, Lopo. No, thanks. Thanks for jumping in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then uh, I'll hand I'll I'll hand over to Sam. This is the she'll just detail basically what happened here and and yeah yeah. Okay, um, great. Thanks, Lava. So at the start of the emergency shutdown, we realized that we needed to move quickly and trying to get like some measure of. So this is this is when the when there was a national lockdown, um, which happened quite quickly. It was like announced and we had a few days to prepare for it and then it was there. Um, uh, so we had got a really good response rate for the survey about 83% um, across 27,000 students um, and we really polled them on what type of access they would have. Um, main results that I just want to highlight is that um, about so most of them indicated they have four to five hours a day to study online. Um, this is due to maybe, you know, um, family care responsibilities at home um, and other things um, that they might be trying to, to upkeep. Um, and then it's particularly low on the list of what they could do is things such as live video conferencing. So only, uh, so only two thirds or one -third Third wouldn't be able to do live live meetings, um, so it was really important that they that they down uh, made recordings of any of those. Um, but really, we we had this promotion of low tech guidelines, which we circulated and was quite well uptake uptaken with the with our staff. Is that um, there's a whole list of this, and you'll see that link there. Um, but they're really guidelines, some do's and don'ts, and other little principles of you know being inclusive, um, don't use excessive tech, um, and just make it really accessible to people um, and good communication. Um, yeah, so we also like we explain to them because a lot of people, like I said, we were very differential, um, though some staff do have problems with 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 access, like we do have some people which don't even have to think and have like fiber lines and such. So we really promoted this like low tech approach where um, you'd be able to to work asynchronously with it. Um, but then also you could do medium data, short videos and stuff. Um, and then they would be able to download those. Um, so that's pre-recorded. And quite a few people obviously went that approach, the medium data. And then not very many. There were some, some uh, courses that, that think they need the live streaming. Um, but yeah, that was um, just they had a note that they needed to make that as inclusive as possible. Um, uh okay student access yeah. i think Lua, you are going to touch on this yes thank you sam um Thanks, yeah um we, we 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 felt that this was important to 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 support uh the student learning experience because remember some of them were uh, still new to the university environment they're still maybe their first year so we had to somehow put together a guide that actually uh takes them through and you know, gives them an idea of what to expect out of, you know, this remote teaching and learning uh, uh, period and how they could uh, plan and work out their time for different courses that they would be doing during this time. Um, you know, so we, what we did, we then, uh, in collaboration with the different faculties, um, we set up uh, uh, these, what we call your faculty orientation sites, and we had general information uh, on, for instance, how they can, you know, continue learning during the, the remote learning period um, and how they can manage their time better, what will be used for communication purposes, and just to make sure that they do not um, feel left behind, uh, you know, during this time. And um, we also not only sub provided support to improve their experience, but also 
we provided support for their well-being, which takes us to the next slide, uh, where the institution actually set up a, a helpline uh, and also shared a couple of other resources. Um, 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 okay, I'm trying to get it back. Okay, <laughs> okay, sure. You're just okay. Sorry, no my tabs, guys. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So as you can see here, so uh, we set up a. A, a, a helpline for students, UCT care, uh, basically focusing on now the person uh, rather than the providing support on the learning process. So for, you know, for student wellness, you know, students that either some of them might be, you know, uh, experiencing a lot of issues during this time, i.e. maybe someone in their family has, you know, uh, has been affected by uh, uh, the, the SARS COVID uh, and uh, they have to take care of their siblings or they've lost someone and so on. So we, we, we were not only focusing on making sure that students continue co and complete the, the teaching and learning calendar, but also we had to take care and show sympathy on whatever they might be going through at home. For some of them, uh, the environment at home is totally different from the environment uh, at university. And some would prefer to be at university the whole year than to be at home uh, for a, a host of other socioeconomic reasons. Uh, so the institution did set up some, some support uh, uh, measures in place and, and, and also supported and, and, and provided some, some toolkits on how they could uh, uh, go through during um, this hard uh, period uh, of COVID. Uh, we have three one. minutes left. Whoa. <laughs> Just okay. to let you know, three minutes to wrap up. Okay, so sure. thank you, thank you. Ah, okay, so this, I'll just fly through this slide. Basically, uh, as much as students were provided with, uh, with devices to, to support the teaching and learning, um, some did not, could not, or maybe they are in far flung remote areas that they still can't uh, use these devices. So. The institution then packaged the cost materials for them to support the, you know, the distance learning uh, mode of learning. And uh, also some continuous assessments were used here. Some, I think, touched based on a lot of asynchronous um, uh, learning and also lectures were, were, were advised to reduce their weekly web, uh, workload. And you'll notice there we've got a pass fail there. This was, Senate decided that for the first second year students, they would have a pass fail. They would won't have like a symbol, like a B or C or whatsoever. But for the exiting students, they would have uh, they would have to get a score, like a mark, like a B or a D or whatsoever. Uh, over to the next slide, Sam. Um, thanks. I'm going to take over from Jan Um So I'll just swap through. Um, so we instituted um, new technologies such as our captions and transcripts, and this was done with open cards. So it was really to increase that accessibility of recordings. And we had both high quality human transcriptions and Google automated transcriptions. Um, we had analytics dashboards. Um, so this was a customization and it involved how much access people have done and how much weekly activity there was. So we could kind of monitor that on a faculty level. Um, the, st the student experience, um, there was a lot of emphasis on better course design. Um, so course design was really important. Obviously there were issues with mental health, social isolation, um, content ov overload. And so there's a lot of different things that we could use. And we sent out to like seven tips for, for lecturers so that they can improve that. Um, teaching support, we, this is well multiple channels and a lot of these were new that we tried and tested. We have a really cool design studio so we can send a link to that if you're interested. Um, and yeah, I think that that was really successful and our webinars were very popular. Um, we had like hundreds of people attend them which is like very surprising for start them. We introduced a new open car studio um, so people could record directly from Bula from the LMS. Um, and yeah, basically all of this, as, as Libabala said, it's, it was zero rated. Um, yeah, it was zero rated because it was self-hosted. So that was really affordance um, from this. Um, so CK, so my colleague's gonna talk a little bit in the lightning talks about our templates. So I'm not gonna mm. go into that, but we did. That would be wonderful. Um, 
uh, customizations. Um, staff did struggle with time. Um, they slowly growed in confidence, though, with online teaching, which is great, but there's still a lot to work, and mental health is always a problem with balance. Um, so we're going to keep on with the design studios. We're going to do more digital orientation start of next year. We're going to um, create our, I think we have almost 100 resources that we need to like try and fit together. We're going to experiment with new tools in a block blended learning format. And we're going to look at um, low density blended models so that we can inform people how to convert face to face to um, what's physically distant. So some of some tutorials on campus, but mostly online. Very this nice. Is us. Very um, this nice. Is us trying to have virtual fun. Uh, we're playing, uh, what are we playing? Uh, rock, paper, scissors. Um, we recorded a <laughs> lockdown diary. So if you if you want something fun, you can see us working from home. Um, uh, your little video there, Link. Um, and really thanks to my my close team, which um, has really done so, such amazing tough work in this. Um, see some people in the room, Steve and Sita and such. Um, so yeah, that is us. Sorry for the Thank rush. <laughs> be certain all, be certain all to visit the uh, the forum for this presentation in the Tri Sakai uh, conference site. And I'd love to give a big thank you to both of our presenters today, Sam Lee and Lubelo. So here's here's that applause. <laughs> and I will stop the recording and uh, bid you to